In this video, we're going to explore how to solve absolute value equations. And we're going to do that by kind of working through eight different examples. And we'll kind of start with some easy examples and then kind of go through some more um, advanced examples um, dealing with the extraneous solutions as well as no solution. So what we're going to do is just kind of work through this, you know, step by step, kind of explain again the process. So this is maybe your first time or you're just using this video as a review. Hopefully it can become handy for you. So the main thing when we have an absolute value equation, we can have something that looks like this 2a absolute value of 2a minus 4 is equal to two. Okay. So the main thing I just want to like, make sure we're all on the same page as remember the absolute value is going to have like exactly two cases, right? Um, I could say the absolute value of two equals two and the absolute value of negative two is equal to two. So basically whatever is inside of this equation, right? This two, a minus four could be equal to two and it would equal two, or what's inside this absolute value equation could be equal to negative two. And then again, it'd still be equal to two, right? So what we have to do is we have to take into account both of these examples. Now, the one thing though that cannot work, right, is the absolute value of some number, right, or whatever expression cannot equal a negative value, right? Notice the absolute value in both these examples was always equal to a positive two. It's never going to be equal to a negative two, all right? So um, I'm not dealing with any of these examples in this case, but whenever we do have an absolute value, if it's ever equal to a negative number, there's just going to be no solution. All right. So just a quick thing to point. Um, so whenever, so when we have an absolute value, we've got to take into account both cases. So the first one is the most easiest one. That's going to be the positive case. And all you're simply going to do is just remove the absolute values. And you're going to say, well, I know this can be equal to a positive two. And then for the negative case, you say, well, this could also equal to a negative two, right? Because the absolute value of negative two is still two. So what I'll do is I'll just now take the, again, remove the absolute value symbols, and then I'll just set it equal to a negative two. Now you can see that I have a um, a linear equation though, that I can simply now just go ahead and solve. So I'll just go ahead and use my inverse operations here and I get a two, a is equal to a six divide by two, divide by two, a is equal to a three. And then over here, I could add a four to both sides and I can get a two, a is equal to a positive two divide by two, divide by two, a is equal to a one. Now it's always important to kind of like check your answer, um, to make sure that you're not dealing with extraneous solutions. And to review, like extraneous solutions are just going to be solutions that make um, a an equation true, but that do not satisfy the original equation. So you could solve for these two equations. You could get two answers, um, and they're going to satisfy these two equations, but they don't necessarily always go ahead and satisfy our original equation. Um, however, in this case, you can see like as long as you plug these back in, as long as you're getting back a two or a negative two, it's going to satisfy the equation on the other side, right? So I'm um, just going to do a little bit of mental math. When I plug three back in, that gives me a two. When I plug a one back in there, that's going to give me negative two. So therefore these are both satisfied here. All right. So now let's go and take a look at another example. What if we have some things outside of our absolute value? For instance, like negative two plus um, negative two times W plus nine is equal to a negative two. Now, one problem that happens with students a lot of times on, a, on an example like this is they will see, oh, like, oh crap, <laughs> like we have it equal to a negative two. Like there's no solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the absolute value is not isolated right? So the first thing you always want to do when solving an absolute value equation is go ahead and isolate this absolute value sign. Okay. So when we isolate the absolute value, um, what we're going to do is basically use my inverse operations to undo whatever is being applied to the absolute value. So in this case, you can see that the negative two is multiplied by absolute value. So I'm going to divide by negative two on both sides. And when I do that, I get the absolute value of a W plus nine is equal to now a positive one. Okay. So that's now going to work, right? That, so that's good. So now we can create our two cases. So inside this absolute value could equal to a one, right? That's what we call the positive case. Or we could say this could also equal a negative one, right? Because the absolute value of negative one is also going to be a one. So I could say a W plus nine is equal to a negative one. Now I can just use my inverse operations, which actually is going to be pretty easy. So I get a W equals a negative eight. And here I'm going to get a W is equal to subtract a nine w is going to equal to a negative 10. And again, let's just do a little bit of mental math. Um, in this case, yeah, just do a little mental math, plugging those values in and negative eight plus nine is going to be a one. Absolute value of one is one. Negative 10 plus nine is going to be negative one. Absolute value of negative one. And you can see that these are both going to work. So what about if we took a, another example, maybe instead of like, instead of multiplying, what if we had like adding or subtracting outside the absolute value? So in this case, I'll do absolute value of B minus three minus a 14 equals to a negative six. And again, don't make the mistake, right? We see that this is equal to a negative six. There are going to be solutions though in this case, because guess what? When you isolate the absolute value, right? You get rid of subtracting the 14. You now have absolute value of B minus three is going to equal to a positive eight. So again, 
this is going to work. Now, inside this absolute value, again, we have these two cases, right? We have b minus 3 could equal to a positive 8, or we could say b minus 3 is going to equal to a negative 8. So then, again, just use your inverse operations. b is equal to 11. Add a 3 to both sides. b is equal to a negative 5. And again, I can just go ahead and plug this in, um, visually kind of mentally check this to make sure that it's going to work, and you can see that, indeed, it does. Um, so let's go and look at another example. Now, what about if we had multiple operations on the outside of a radical? So what if I had a three times a four W minus one minus five is equal to a 10. Okay. So in this case, what I always like to tell students is like, just kind of like think of this as like a two-step equation, right? If this was like a two-step equation, what would you do? Right. And let me just go and put this, let me actually move this above. Like, what would you do on something like that? Well, hopefully, if you remember, like from your early Algebra 1 days, right, all you're simply going to do is like add the 5 and then divide by 3, right? So you always undo addition and subtraction first, then you undo multiplication and division. So by following my reverse order of operations, that's exactly what I'm going to do in this case. I'm going to add a 5 on both sides, and so I get a 3 times a 4w minus 1 is equal to a 15. Now I can just divide by three on both sides, get the absolute value of a 4w minus one is equal to a five, right? And now you can see I can create my two cases, right? So inside that absolute value, it could be equal to a five or it could equal to a negative five. So I'm just going to create those two cases. So I can say 4w minus one equals five and a 4w minus one is equal to a negative five. Now I'm just gonna use my inverse operations. Now again, in this case, what we're gonna have is a two-step equation, okay? So when we, again, we got to undo addition and subtraction first. Um, and then we're going to divide by a four so that I can get W equals a three halves. And then this one, I'll add a one on both sides and a four W is equal to a negative four. Okay, so divide by four on both sides and I can get a W is equal to a negative one. Now again, we still want to go ahead and check our work. The nice thing though is like, I know that as long as that's going to equal negative five, right, that's going to work. And again, like when you multiply four times three halves, that's equal to two, two, um, two times, I'm sorry, that's going to divide out to a two times three, which is six, six minus one is going to be five. When you plug a negative one in here, four times negative one is negative four minus one is negative five. And you can see that these are both going to work. Okay. So typically like kind of give you a little bit of hint or a little bit of advice, whenever your absolute value is just going to be equal to one number. Um, you obviously still want to check your work to make sure that you didn't get an extraneous, you know, solution or you didn't do anything wrong, but you should just be like that. You shouldn't be dealing with any extraneous solutions. However, in the next example, this is where you kind of like your red flags. This is something where you'd be like, uh Oh, I definitely have a very high probability now of having an extraneous solution because now we just don't have a variable on inside the absolute value and a problem like this, we're going to have a variable on both sides. All right. So it's going to be extremely important to also make sure that we check our solutions. So we have the absolute value isolated and you might say, Hey, it's equal to a negative. Yeah. But we don't know what X is, right? X could be a negative number. Now, again, if X is not a negative number, then we, it would be an extraneous solution, right? So, um, that's something like important to know. So like when we go ahead and solve for our two cases, if we get a positive number, right, then positive times a negative is going to make a negative. That's going to be an extraneous solution. Let's see what's happening here. All right. So let's go and check to see if we can figure it out. I'll do the first one. X plus 24 is equal to a negative seven X and oh, if we run off space, let me move that over. Um, and then I can do a X plus 24 is equal to a positive seven X, right? Cause again, we need to negate. We need to do the positive as well as the negative version. All right. So if I subtract and actually you not, know, let's yeah, let's subtract an X on both sides. Um, so therefore I get a 24 is equal to a negative eight X divide by negative eight by by negative eight, x is going to equal to a uh, negative three. Okay. Um, and again, like, let's see if that works. Like negative three into um, plus 24 is going to be 21. Absolute value 21 is 21. Negative seven times negative three is going to be a positive 21. So that works. Um, now over here though, if I subtract an x on both sides, I get a 24 is equal to a six x, right? Divide by six, divide by six x is now going to equal a four. Well, we have a problem here, right? Because if you put a four times negative seven, that's going to be a negative 28. That's going to be an extraneous solution. So even though this satisfies this equation, it does not satisfy the original equation. That is why we call that an extraneous solution. Um, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at, actually, you know what, let's, um, let's go and take a look at, let me see if I can add that. 
this in there. All right, so if I go ahead and pick out a, actually, yeah, let me go and see if I can add a, add an extra page just so I have an extra work. There you go, okay, I do have extra work. Cool, all right, uh-oh, sorry about that. All right, let's go ahead and get into six. I use a little bit more work on my original equation than I wanted to. All right, so what if we have an equation where we um, have some operations, not just a, operations also with the variable or also with the absolute value like 2a plus seven, right? So three times 2a plus seven. And then also not only do we have a variable on the other side, but we also have some numbers, right? So again, the first thing we always wanna do guys, it doesn't matter what's on the right hand side, like isolate, get rid of the, um, any operations being applied to your absolute value, right? So divide by three on both sides. And then again, we have a 2a plus seven is equal to an a plus four, okay? So again, now we need to create those two cases. Now again, I know sometimes it gets confusing when you're looking at like variables on both sides. Um, but again, like the, don't forget the absolute value here. But remember, we gotta go back to like when we just had a number, like we have to create that positive case as well as that negative case. So therefore, the positive case is really just gonna be the simplest and easiest one to straight. Like you basically just eliminate the absolute value and now you can have the right-hand side exactly as the same. However, for the negate, negate, um, Negated side, what you're going to do is a 2a plus 7 is equal to a negative a plus 4. So it's really important that you kind of understand the use of parentheses here because you're not just negating the a, you're negating the a plus the 4, okay? And again, I'm not saying make them negative. I'm saying negate them, right? That's a big difference. So you're just making using them to be the opposite sign. So therefore, it's going to be a negative a minus a 4. Okay, so now we just need to use our inverse operations here. So I will subtract an a on both sides. Um, a plus, sorry a plus seven is equal to a positive four and then subtract a seven, subtract a seven, a is gonna equal a negative three. And then in this case, what I can do is add an a to both sides, subtract a seven on both sides, and therefore I get a three a is equal to a negative 11. Okay, so now let's go ahead and divide by three on both sides and I get a is equal to a negative 11 thirds. Okay, so now we need to make to check though, it's like, remember last example where we had an extraneous solutions? Like we gotta be able to see is are one of these going to be an extraneous solution. Now, when I just have this negative three, like you can plug them into either the top equation or the bottom equation. It doesn't really matter, okay? So you can plug them into either one, it doesn't matter. Now, what I would prefer to do in this case is for this example, I'm gonna plug it into the bottom equation. And then for this equation, I'm actually, um, I'm actually gonna top plug it into the top equation. And I'll kind of explain, I'll, I'll explain why as I go through it. But in this equation, like let's just plug in absolute value of two times, and then instead of a, it's gonna be negative three, right? Um, then that's gonna be plus seven equals a negative three plus four. Okay, so two times negative three is going to be a negative six. Negative six plus seven is, that's an absolute value. Um, negative six plus seven is a one, right? Absolute value of one is going to be one. Negative three plus four is one. So you can see how that one works out. Now the negative 11 third, the reason why I want to plug it into this top equation is because when I multiply the negative 11 thirds times three, that's going to get rid of the fraction, right? And in my opinion, like that just makes life so much easier if I can get rid of the fraction, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, so I have a three times the absolute value of, let's actually, let's plug it in right up here. So I have the three times the absolute value of two times and the negative, negative 11 thirds plus seven now that doesn't look like too much fun, equals a three times a negative 11 thirds plus a 12. Okay, so again, as I mentioned, like that's technically a three over one, right? So those are gonna divide out. So that's equal to a negative 11 plus 12. Okay, um, now over here, what we simply needed to be able to do is kind of see, well, how can I rewrite seven in terms of thirds? So please remember that seven um, is the same thing as a 21 over three, right? So what I have here now is a three times the absolute value of a negative 22 over three plus a 21 over three equals negative 11 plus 12 is going to be a one. Now, let's kind of do a little mental math here. Negative 22 over third, negative 22 over three plus a 21 over three is a negative one third. Absolute value of a negative one third is one third. One third times three is going to be a one one is equal to one, you can see that that satisfies. Now, I know at the beginning of this video, I said I have eight different examples for you, but I think the next two examples I have are just going to be a little bit redundant. Now, if you need more examples or more help, then go ahead and check out the next example or video I have for you here.